to some God. I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the Ancient of the Days. I'm the Rahman Rahim. And you don't know where I come. You don't know from where I came. All you know is I am one with many aspects, different names. Then one day the thought formed into a word inside my brain. Then I said, let it be. Then next thing I heard a bang. Then I split up into infinite dimensions. What a chain. Now we're all interlinked. We are a one in the same. Um, TV. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we got free. So before I go in on how we got free, I first got to give a shout out. Shout out to Abraham Lincoln. You. Shout out to George Washington. You. Y'all motherfuckers ain't had to do with how we got free. Because the founders of America, the founders of America didn't intend for you to be free. The people who uphold the Constitution, they know you not free. You a debt slave. You not free. So now, you want to know how you got free? The Gullah Wars, baby. The Gullah Wars. Let's talk about war. Because y'all want to vote y'all way to freedom? Y'all want some economic solution and pay for your freedom? You're not going to be able to buy your freedom. You're not going to be able to vote your way to be free. It's going to be blood, sweat, and tears. If you want to be free, you're going to have to put your life on the line. You're going to have to kill, and you're going to have to die. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. So, if that's not what you're willing to do, then your ass ain't never going to be free. So now, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. How you got free... The Gullah Wars. That's how you got free. Another name for the Gullah Wars is the 100 Year War. You got free because your people fought and died for your freedom. Abraham Lincoln didn't fight and die for you. Abraham Lincoln told you he didn't give a shit whether you got free or not. Let me tell you how you got free. The Gullah Wars, which is really the 100 Year Wars. They called it the Indian Wars. Now keep in mind, what does Indian mean? Indian means indigenous, indigenous wars. Indian means the indigo wars, the indigo people. You not black, you indigo. You not black, you indigenous. You been over here. Only a handful of people came over here on them slave boats. Your ass been here. Them people on the reservations getting $5,000 a month you supposed to be getting $5,000 a month. But why you not getting your reparations? Because you don't even know who you are. Let's get into it. What is Florida? Florida used to be Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, Louisiana. Florida used to be all of the South. Who owned Florida? Florida was owned by Spain. That was from 1513 up until 1821. South Carolina was a very small lot of land. Three quarters of South Carolina was Florida. Y'all talking that shit. Harriet Tugman helped everybody get free by sending them to Canada. That was 900 miles away. Or you could go 50 miles down to Florida. Florida was everything south of the Mason-Dixon line and everything west up until Texas. But Spain never settled that land. South Carolina was the bottom of the 13 colonies. A runaway slave was the same as a fugitive slave. A runaway or a fugitive was called a maroon. A fugitive is called a seminal. Oh, the seminal wars. That was the runaway wars. The seminal wars. That was the fugitive wars. Who were the runaways? Who were the fugitives? I'm gonna get into that in two seconds. These runaways and these fugitives, they didn't go to Canada because what they gonna tell you, your people was some running ass niggas. No, if you gave us a problem, we fought. The fighting Irish, no. The fighting Moors, the fighting Maroons, the fighting Seminoles. We fought the cave beasts until we got free. We fought until the end. A hundred years, these runaways established a place deep in Florida that was called Fort Moses. When Spain finally found out about the Negroes or the Maroons, what does maroon mean? Someone who has been marooned on a desert island. So these people who were marooned in America 
half of us were from America, the other half were not. In the beginning of slavery, they did not perfect slavery. Today, slavery has been perfected because you don't think you were slave, but you were slave. In 1738, slavery was not perfected. So what did they do? What mistake did they make? They let the family stay together. That was the mistake. These families who were together, they started the Gullah Wars. These families were called the Gullahs and the Geechees. They started a fort called Fort Maroon in 1738. Spain said, okay, you were already in Florida by the time we established El Florida, which was all of the South. So in order for you to stay in Spanish territory, you've got to accept these guns we about to give you and accept four years of military training. Of course, you've got to learn Spanish. So in order to stay in Florida, you got to learn how to fight and you got to get an education. 1738, Spain recognizes Fort Moses. South Carolina gets word of this because keep in mind, South Carolina is not a state. South Carolina is a colony. And it says to the other colonies, help us, help us. The other colonies like, oh, we got our own problems. We can't really help you like talking about. You got to figure this shit out yourself. South Carolina's like, all right, bet. South Carolina passes the Security Act of 1739. The Security Act requires all colonists to carry guns. Even on Sunday, keep a gun on you because these niggas ain't playing. So 1739, the slaves find out about the Security Act. They say before they implement the Security Act, we need to revolt. The time is now. They have the Stono Rebellion. In the Stono Rebellion, the slaves go and raid a gun shop. It was only like 20 of them. They raid the gun shop, take all the guns, kill the cave beasts, and go marching down the street. So all the other indigenous people, the indigo people, I'm talking blue, black, they all join forces. They said, since we see our brothers mobbing in the street, let's join them. This rebellion became so big, it was known as the Stono Rebellion. So South Carolina... They scared shitless. 1740, they passed the Negro Act. No moving around, slaves. Slaves could leave the plantation? Yes, slaves could leave the plantation. Slaves could go to parties. Oh, slaves could come together? Yes, slaves could come together. Slaves couldn't come together after the Negro Act. 1740, South Carolina passes the Negro Act. Slaves can't move around. They can't congregate. They can't grow their own food. They can't have all the civil liberties that slaves had before 1740. This goes on for 72 years. Keep in mind, the Gullahs is still establishing. They still got their guns. They still learning and ain't nobody playing around. While the indigenous people, the indigo people are fighting, the Indians, what is an Indian? Indians have crusty earwax. You not an Indian, you don't have crusty earwax. Who are the only other people on earth who have crusty earwax? Chinese people. So when the Chinese people came over here and algamated with the indigenous people, they created the Indian people. The Creek Indians, the crusty earwax people. This is an internal fight. The Creek Confederacy was fighting amongst themselves for four hundred years. In Africa, there was a saying, the friend of my friend is my friend. The cave beast, once he found that out, he said, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. He knew he couldn't defeat you straight up, so he had to practice the art of war. When the British intervened, they said to the Indians, you want to end this 400 year war, Creek Indians? I'll help you. Half the Creek Indians said, fuck you, I don't want your help. The other half, sell out as Indians, they said, yeah, I'll take your help. So now the British intervened in the Creek War. Within less than a year after the British intervened, the Creek War ends. And the side that said for the British to help them, that was the side that won. Once the Creek Wars end, the losers go down south because the losers were the ones who did not want the cave beast help. They're called Seminoles. The Creek Indians who accepted Cave Beast help were called Creole. If you are Creole, you light, bright, and almost white. Why? They had sex with the British. The Seminoles were dark-skinned because they did not amalgamate and they went down south. 
By the time these Seminoles, these Indians who did not accept British help get down to Florida, your grandparents, they've been practicing the art of war for over a hundred years. They got all types of military training. They know how to speak Indian, different African languages, and Spanish. Ladies, by the time your daughter turns six in Spanish territory, Florida, her ass gotta go through four years of military training. By the time her ass is 10, she's a warlord. So now your family done practiced the art of war for the last hundred years and the Indians, the crusty earwax people, they've been shooting bows and arrows. Your nine-year-old daughter, her ass good with a rifle. So 1817, the Seminole Wars began. The Maroon Wars the Moorish Wars, the Black Wars, the Melanated Wars. Those were the Gullah Wars. The Gullahs got to step in. These are not the Indian Wars. They're the Negro Wars. The Indians just lost. They just lost the Creek War because the British brought in sophisticated weaponry. Now, the Seminole Wars was led by General Thomas Jessup who wrote the Seminole Saga. It was also called the Jessup Report. In the Jessup Report, he says, I found the Negroes to be the most active and determined warriors. And during the Indian conference with the chiefs, I ascertained that they, the Negroes, had the most influence and control. This is not an Indian war, but a Negro war. So now we start the Indian wars. We start the Negro wars, the Gullah wars. These are your family wars. The Battle of Fort Negro, 1816. Franklin County, Florida. This is still Spanish territory. They kept shooting cannonballs and they couldn't do anything. So now the KBs lit a cannonball on fire and he got it red hot. And then they shot it over the wall of Fort Negro. They luckily hit some explosives and they blew the whole fort up. Body parts were everywhere. They found body parts 200 feet up in trees. They said after the battle of Fort Negro, we're gonna practice guerrilla warfare, decentralized war. 1818, the battle of San Juanee. San Juanee is a river. They go onto the river to go and find our people. I'm sorry, the Battle of Suwanzee. It was a stretch of Negro towns along the Suwanzee River. It's important to note, Andrew Jackson was the one who told the colonists to go help out the Creeks, to try to get them to sell out. It's important to note, when they won the Creek War, that's when Georgia was established, Alabama was established, Arkansas was established. That's when all those states were finally established. Andrew Jackson goes down to fight the Battle of Suwanzi because he helped win the Creek Wars and establish Georgia and all these other states. Keep in mind, Andrew Jackson was the general during this time. Jacksonville, Florida. So now the Battle of Suwanzi, they whooped his ass Thoroughly. After they whipped Andrew Jackson's battalion's ass, they disappeared. So Andrew Jackson and them left. And on their way out, they found the women and children. They slaughtered the defenseless women and children and then claimed the battle of Suwanzee as a victory. Let's fast forward 1812. Denmark VC. Denmark VC had established a church. Dylan Roof shot up that church. That was Denmark VC's church. Dylan Roof is from South Carolina. He knew the story of the Gullah Wars. That's why Dylan Roof shot up Denmark VC's church, because Denmark VC was hooked up with the Gullahs. Gullah Jack went to Denmark VC, and Denmark VC gave Gullah Jack the green light. This is 1822. The Gullahs first got it popping in 1738. This is some time before Denmark VC was even born. So Gullah Jack gives Denmark VC the history. He tells Denmark, you in South Carolina, where this whole thing started with the Stono rebellions. So Denmark VC like, okay, well, let's get it popping again. Because they burned down Denmark VC's church. Denmark VC said, well, I can't have peace. But before they could do the official part two Stono rebellion, they got snitched on, so they couldn't do it. So now, 1830. The Indian Removal Act, 1829, Andrew Jackson is a hero. They make him president, and as soon as he gets in office, Andrew Jackson passes an Indian Removal Act. The Indians, I'm talking about the people with the crusty earwax, they not fighting no more. The Indians then had all the fight beat out of them. Your family never gave up. Your family never waved the white flag. 
So now the Indians, they're going to go and try to take the white man to court. They sued them for the Indian Removal Act. Guess what? The Indians won. The Indian Removal Act was unconstitutional. The judge who said that the Indian Removal Act was unconstitutional, guess what Andrew Jackson said? Stop me then. The Trail of Tears was the Indian Removal Act. Three out of every four Indians died. 1831 Nat Turner Rebellion. Nat Turner, he rebels. There were no Gullah Wars, but there was a fierce resistance. 1835, the Dade Massacre. St. Augustine, Florida. The Gullahs, they ambushed the Americans at a river crossing. Out of 200 soldiers, only two were allowed to live. 1835, the Battle of Wichaluchi, Citrus County, Florida. Again, it was an ambush at a river crossing. The Gullahs kicked all types of ass. How did you get free? Your ancestors could not be controlled. America could not contain us. They said, we've got to do something because we can't maintain the institution of slavery. Now you go to the school, they be like, your grandparents were good slaves. They followed the law, they worked really hard, and they helped build America. Half of your family helped build America. The other half was busy trying to tear that bitch down. The Battle of Okeechobee, 1837. At this point, America's like, we can't do nothing with them. So they bring a thousand soldiers. Because keep in mind, in the beginning, when South Carolina said, we need y'all help, the 13 colonists said, it ain't that serious. At this point, they said, it's that serious. There's a super big problem, and we're going to have to get all hands on deck. If you're an American, you need to help us kill these people, because the resistance is serious. So now, in the Battle of Lake Okeechobee, the Gullahs kicked all types of ass. Out of a thousand men, only 26 men left unscathed. 1842, Gullah exile. Keep in mind the Creek Wars when all this shit started, the Creeks were promoted to slave masters. All those Creoles from Louisiana, they were the ones who were in charge of being the new slave masters. So these fake ass slave masters took you over to Oklahoma. So the Gullahs went over there in 1850, the Gullahs kicked the Indians asses. The Indian Wars was really the Gullah Wars, because these Indians who were your slave masters, the Gullahs turned on them and they kicked their ass in 1850 and they ran away. A lot of the Gullahs went to Cuba. A lot of the Gullahs went to South America. A lot of the Gullahs, after they went to Oklahoma and kicked the Indians asses, they went to North Mexico. So the Gullahs, they went to North Carolina and they established a Seminole Maroon fugitive runaway settlement. Now we at 1855. The Battle of the Texas Rangers. Heavily armed Texas Rangers attempted to destroy the settlement in North Mexico. Got their asses kicked again. So white people finally gave up. The Indians gave up, went back to Oklahoma. Cave Beast gave up, went back to Texas. They said, we can't beat them. The melanated man has too much fight. And we stayed out there and fought constantly. So now that was 1855. Just 10 years later, the South said, you know what? We're going to do our own thing because the union can't hold on to their power. And to control us, you're gonna have to go extra hard to put these people in check. You got to kill everybody. So the union's like, I don't know, we're not gonna go to that extreme. Well, fuck you. That's what the South said before they succeeded. Abraham being attacked from all angles. Abraham Lincoln says, I can't do anything. They off the chain, literally. So I'm gonna make up a lie and make it look like we had control all along. So Abraham Lincoln and his advisors said, we're gonna make up a bullshit piece of paper called the Emancipation Proclamation and we're gonna tell them that's how they got free. But that's not how you got free. You got free from the Gullah Wars, from your family who fought from day in, day out. With that said, the revolution will not be fought with guns anymore, people. The revolution is in the mind. The art of war is mental. Free your mind. The war is not over. You're a mental slave. If we all free our minds, then the war will be over. You don't have to shoot no guns. You don't got to kill nobody. You ain't got to tell anybody you hate them. Just understand what's really going on. That's happening. I love all of y'all. Peace, salutations, ashe, hotel, black power, Islam, whatever it is you say to show your solidarity. I am with you. Crumb.
TV.